Euroasian Bob strikes again, and this time it's going to cost him. It's going to be very expensive. Let's get started. This is a 1994 Ferrari 348. It looks similar in the front to a 355 or 355, but this is the predecessor to the 355, the 348. Many of you have watched Hoovy's Garage and know that he had a black 348 with 100,000 miles on it. And it rarely ever broke or gave him any trouble. This is Eurasian Bob. He's had it for quite a while. He's been kind of working the bugs out and kind of checking out you know, driving it and seeing what kind of things that need to be taken care of, addressed. He kind of wanted to keep it, but at some point he probably will sell it and we'll let you guys know when that time comes, but until then he's going to cruise this thing and enjoy it. We don't have any service history on this car. It was purchased that way. He got a pretty good deal on it and the engine is soon to come out. Daniel Sun's been diving in. He's a seven year certified Ferrari technician. He knows these cars like the back of his hand. He really gets happy when there is a Ferrari in the shop. We'll take a quick look around this thing. It's already pieces and parts on tables. I know you guys love parts on carts. We're already starting that on this car. Here's the front of this beautiful 348. The paint is very, very nice on this one. And we always know if we ever wanted a Ferrari, it's always got to be red. And this one definitely fits the bill. Nice red Ferrari. I really like the side strakes on the side. You can see them on the door. It's reminiscent of a Testarossa. One thing that the 355 does better than this one is sound better. It's got the five valve heads on it. It sounds amazing. But I believe the 348 looks better. No, Euroasian Bob didn't buy it this way with the panels and pieces missing. He's been driving it. It's in very good shape. It's, uh, it's got all the panels. Everything's there. What's happened here is Daniel's son has gotten excited and he has started tearing things apart. And already we're finding things wrong. We haven't even got the engine out yet. There's those beautiful side strakes again. Very, very nice. We'll let Mrs. Wizard show you guys around in the very small interior. You guys have already seen under the hood. Well, that hood's actually gone. But let's jump into the interior then. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, look at this gauge cluster. Look, it's glowing orange in there, and it not it just beautiful? It has 37,288 miles on here. Not many, and it's going to present just that way. It's a very tiny little dash, but it's in really pristine condition. All the vents are in good shape. None of the little tiny, we can get up there with the camera, let us get up there. None of those little louvers up there are broken, all in tip-top shape. As we move back, we'll see that it does denote that it is the convertible spider edition. And we have more orange gauges and push button, push button, and a few more push buttons. It does have a beautiful chrome gated shifter, looking great, and a few buttons and an extra one just in case you want to put something there. Okay, that's nice. As we move down, oh looky, we got a hidey hole and when we open it up, okay, it is just an ashtray, but apparently we have driver's and passenger side ashtrays. Hmm, okay. Do have a center little cubby section there with his Ferrari hat and a tiny little hidey hole. Oh looky, we've got a cute little Oh look, he left his little tiny 928 in here. How adorable. This is great, Bob. Quite cute, but we'll put it back. As we look at a door card, the leather wrap from the front wraps beautifully around into this door panel as well. Has carpet on that lower section, leather in the middle and plastic on the top. To get out, we have a fun handle right here that pulls up. Here we are, we're at the steering wheel, which means we're almost done, I know. But I love how they denote at the top of the Ferrari emblem horn. I, I like that, I appreciate that because I don't think we would have figured that out otherwise. Okay, nonetheless, steering wheel is in great shape. No rips, no tears, leather is nice. Feels like it's got a good grip to it. Curious to hear what's going on with that engine. Let's see what's going on. Are you having fun, Danielson? I am having a ton of fun. I know you are. I didn't even come out of my office 10 minutes later and this stuff's already in pieces. But that's good, that's definitely what it's here for. And I think a storm is rolling in. Holy moly. I don't think they'll be able to hear us. You're not gonna be able to film. It's too loud. 
Sorry guys, I had to take a quick break because a Kansas storm, we brought our cars all inside the shop because it did hail. We don't need hail dents on our Maseratis and BMWs and nice cars, so we got a lot of cars in the shop right now. But back to the 348. One thing that is really cool that I wanted to show you guys about this car before we really start tearing it down and Daniel is literally diving into this thing. How many of you have heard of doing a clutch, the pressure plate, everything without even pulling the engine or transmission out? You can do that on a 348 as you can see down here. It's at the very back end of the transaxle. And here we have it sitting on the table. There's the uh, pressure plate and kind of the flywheel. The flywheel is right here. It actually bolts to this here which spins on a bearing. But you can unbolt all this on the car, pull the bumper off without pulling any engine or transmission out. It's really cool. One of the things that Eurasian Bob was complaining about is it was running really rich and kind of running rough. He did try some oxygen sensors and it maybe got a little better, but it didn't solve the problem. And Danielson dived in and found exactly what it was. Here's a picture here. You can see that the inside connectors of the mass airflow sensors are severely corroded. Like the corrosion was getting into the circuitry and whatnot. So, we were able to clean it just enough to verify that if it had good connections, it would run right. It ran beautiful. Didn't it run pretty good then? Yeah, it basically came back uh, to life after that. It was like running smooth and yeah. idling smooth. Like it should. Yeah. So we're not going to leave it that way. Whatever's wrong with those airflow sensors, I don't trust them for the next 20 years or 10 years. We're going to put new ones on. But then we got that solved and we found one more issue and we haven't even got that deep into the engine yet what did you find out on the cats so it looks like somebody uh m maybe they messed with them when they were dealing with the exhaust or something but they pulled out this wire mesh that goes around the actual honeycomb and they tore it up you can see that this wire mesh is hanging out and if i move it it actually moves the ceramic in and out you can see deep inside of there that cat is completely destroyed. The other one is not far behind it. It's starting to disintegrate just like that one. So some would say just delete the cats or punch them out, but this has a monitoring system, doesn't it? A thermocouple? Yes, it does. It's a little temperature probe that basically uh, bolts in right after the cat to just measure its temperature. If it doesn't reach the temperature it likes to see, you'll get slow down light Once on a Ferrari. It'll have left bank or right bank slow down, which means there's an issue going on with that side of the engine. And we don't want those kind of things happening. We want to fix it right. So this far in, all we have is probably 20% of it apart, and we're already seeing a lot of problems. Yes. So this is one of those situations that me and Daniel were talking about. It's like, what does it cost to do a timing belt service on a 348? Five or six grand. Until you get a part and you start finding more. And isn't this the reason why we do the services? You, there's a lot to replace. Yeah, usually when uh, these cars, people will uh, dump it to the next owner after they neglected a lot of services. And then the next owner dumps it to the next owner and so on. And you get this, you get a lot of stuff that's not been taken care of for years. And then you get this one big major service that needs everything. You start finding cats that are bad like we just showed you. We found airflow sensors causing the issue. We found some other issues going on with other items. And then the question is like, I, th I thought we talked about five or six grand. Why are we getting close to eight or ten? With that situation, I would say, well, we can stop. We put it back together and park it outside if you don't want to go further. The items that are on a Ferrari that have issues or need services, you don't cheap out on them. You had those probably people come through when you worked at Ferrari that are trying to cheap out? Definitely. We yeah. Definitely would, they would just simply um, deny services and then take it to somebody else that would do it cheaper. But in reality, it's like we would get those cars back eventually. Yeah, because they didn't do it right. No, not really. <laughs> so we contacted EuroAsian Bob before we got any deeper. And I said, you know what? We haven't got very far into this and the price is just going up and up and up. He told me, he said, you know what, I, I understand that. I want to proceed. I want this thing to be right. 
I don't want it to cheap out. I don't want to cut corners. Let's get this thing solved. I know it's going to be expensive. He says, I don't want to spend all the money. No one ever wants to spend all that money. It's not fun, but it has to be done. This isn't a Subaru. This isn't a Honda. This is a Ferrari. Is that kind of the way you think? Yeah, well, honestly, you only get a bad reputation because they take it, it breaks, they don't really know what's broken, they assume it was you. And when you're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, yeah. you don't want to be in those situations. So you right. get it right the first time, I'm done. So we got the go-ahead Danielson. You can go ahead and dive in and pull this thing all the way out. We're going to get a whole parts list together. Yes, <laughs> I'm thinking that way too. It is going to be expensive. It, it's just the name of the game. A Ferrari service, you've probably seen some in the dealership, they're what, 20,000, 30,000? Yep, I think my biggest one was about 50 on a 360. $50,000. This gentleman wanted everything on this car. You're good. Everything. He wanted it to last. Yeah. It's definitely not the car to buy and keep it serviced properly if you have a small budget. Unlike some cars, these are truly an investment car. You've probably seen it in the dealerships where people don't even drive them. Yep. They don't even want to drive them. Mm -hmm. They just bought it to keep it in good shape and sell it 10 years down the road for double their money. Yep. So we would get cars regularly that they came in at a, you know at a thousand miles and then the next year they were a thousand and fifty miles. That's all they drove it for the whole year. Yeah. And those are situations where the timing belt can go 10, 15 years. It's never been changed. And they say, well, I haven't reached the mileage yet. Well, you have reached the age. The rubber can dry rot. It's been sitting in a tension position for a long time so we don't have any service history on the timing belts on this we're just going to do it it doesn't matter if we're going to pull the engine out we're going to go through and do all these items and get it all taken care of we're going to pull the engine out we'll do another video for you guys and daniel son will demonstrate the little table he has he has a special table that's made we can actually drop the engine out and it's really really a cool procedure it's really neat i'm sorry about the weird pause and the weather we really can't do anything about the weather but it's a lot cooler now. It's not 100 degrees out. Uh, you've been making some headway on the 456 engine over there, huh? Yeah. Getting some things back together, getting it cleaned up. If you want to follow along what he's got going on with the 456 or really a bunch of other really cool videos that he has, there's a link in the description to Daniel Sun's channel. You definitely want to go check it out. There's the Audi that we saw in the shop here that the customer asked us to send it to the junkyard. He actually has it running now. We went through and rebuilt the cylinder head. You can follow along on his channel and find out all what happened there. And it's sold too. And it's literally right behind me. Running and driving again. Literally thousands of dollars later. Even with just me and him doing the work and paying me paying for the parts, it's still thousands of dollars to get that thing back on the road. Again, check out his channel. It's a really good channel. If you're curious what kind of tools that he uses or we use in the shop to work on all these cars, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we're getting close to a million subscribers. We definitely want to hit that million mark. Thanks for watching.